good evening all <coughs> good evening shiv prasad good evening sir good evening tanmay good evening sir yeah good evening shruti good evening sir good evening uh, bhumika vk good evening sir uh good evening bhumika km good evening sir yes uh, good evening everyone once again yeah so myself uh, mallesh from abiyantrik soft lab okay uh as you all uh, joining for today's uh, day 1 class okay so this is the first class of uh, machine learning with python introduction class yeah good evening pavitra good evening sir yes so i am from malesh from abiyantrik soft lab okay so so in this program is about machine learning okay so so ml with python so here we are uh, going to discuss today basically about uh, what you will be learning in this uh, particular uh, internship program and how do you begin this uh, learning okay so before that i just want to uh, get a brief introduction about yourself okay so shukrasad starting with shukrasad Sir, can you give a short introduction about yourself? Okay, sir. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sir. I am from Nine Eight Soft Software Engineering, and I am from Mechatronics Department. And uh, I joined Machine Learning with Python no. in order to get the knowledge about coding because I am since I am in Mechatronics. Ah, join again. Coding is just uh, only me. ऑडिबल Good evening to everyone. My name is Tanmay. I am from Mechatronics Department in Sixam. I have joined this course to enhance my knowledge in machine learning and even uh, enhance my knowledge in coding. So my purpose of learning is gaining as much as knowledge as possible and even completing the projects. Thank you. Thank you, Tanmay. Uh, Shruti DS. Myself Shruti. Good evening. Good evening, all. Myself Shruti DS. I am come from. Uh, I am from. Uh, Bapuji Institution, Bapuji Institution of uh, Engineering and Technology. My branch is uh, Electronics and Department. Uh, I gaining knowledge about uh, Python for um, coding. That's all. Yeah, should be fine. Thank you. See here, guys. Uh, one thing. Okay, when you are introducing, okay, don't worry. Okay, so uh, try speak as much as possible with you or whatever you want to convey. Just convey. Okay, so no need to hurry up. Okay, so quickly you can all give the introduction. Okay. So please, well, give an introduction. Give your name, okay, college, where you're from, branch, okay, and then like, uh, why are you joining this, okay, like, what you would like to uh, learn and all, okay, fine. We'll continue with the Bhumika VK. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Bhumika VK. I am from Bapuji Institute and Engineering Technology, uh, Davangere. Uh, i joined into machine learning with uh, python uh, because of uh, i gained the knowledge uh, in coding hmm. i want to uh, gain the knowledge in coding so i joined the uh, python thank you thank you bhumika okay bhumika came good evening sir good evening everyone 
I am Bhumika Kayam. I am doing my uh, sixth semester electronics and communication from Bapuji Institute of Engineering and Technology, Davangere. I joined this uh, ML of this Python course because I am interested in coding. I want to join IT, so I am here. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Pavitra, NS, Pavitra NS. Okay, Akshay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. <laughs> good, good afternoon, sir. Good evening. Hear me, Akshay. Hear me, Nagala. Paro, can I tell you something, Nagala? Nani, sir. Akshay, sir. Na Bapu Jee the what year is it? Six M. Okay. Name the app place. Place your app place in the bandi dira. No, Kopal. Kopal. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, continue, buddy. Okay. Machine learning in the series of Python, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Python is all about that. Okay, start. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Thank you. Hello, sir. 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 Hello, Rushaba? Rushaba BS. Yeah. Electronics department. I wanted to learn the coding because I am too in coding. So mm -hmm. that's why I come with the Python. Okay, Rushaba. Thank you. Vashin, you can introduce yourself. Varshini, sir, from Jain, Technology, mm -hmm. sir, CS, mm -hmm. I mean, Python, sir, that's right. Okay, Varshini, thank you. Okay, yeah. So, thank you all for introducing yourself. Okay, so here I have my one more colleague, Rakshita. Okay, she will be the another trainer who will be uh, taking up few sessions in this class. Okay, welcome, Rakshita. Uh, uh, she is uh, MTech, uh, BE and MTech from uh, PESIT, Bangalore and she will be the trainer for your basics of Python and later on I will be switching uh, training you people continue with the uh, machine learning. She will also be assisting with the uh, ML classes. Okay, She has done uh, various training programs and machine learning and she has more expertise in uh, uh, machine learning with Python and cloud coping with Azure. Okay, and she also handles uh, projects for B and M Tech students, and she has already guided over 15 M Tech students in the previous year. Okay, so yeah, that's the introduction about uh, your another trainer. Okay, so myself, uh, I'll give my introduction once again. Okay, so myself, Malesh, I'll be the trainer for this uh, particular uh, program and ML with Python. Okay, so in this course, okay, first of all, I'll tell you people. Okay. Uh, when you take up this session, okay, you will be learning both Python coding okay, as well as the machine learning. Okay. Not just you will be learning uh, theory of the machine learning, you will be learning both uh, Python coding concepts and machine learning. When you learn the machine learning concepts, you will again uh, practice this theoretical aspects by using the Python coding itself. Okay, That's why initial focus will be on the Python. Okay. So then we'll be moving on to the other sessions, okay, on data exploration and then moving on to the machine learning concepts, okay. So I'll give you the flow, how does this uh, training program goes, okay. Usually daily on a basis of Monday to Friday, you'll be having a uh, at least a two hours of session online, okay. So during the session, okay, you will be doing the hands-on session along with the trainer, okay. So you need to keep your mobile and laptops parallelly, okay, side by side. So you will be watching the video of the trainer live, okay. So as the trainer starts explaining the concepts, you please listen, okay. When he start typing the programs, so you also keep typing and try executing and check the results immediately, okay. Whenever you find the difficulties in understanding the concept explained, you need to ask it immediately or otherwise next day sessions you can ask the doubts. Otherwise you can uh, 
post us a messages so we'll be happy to reply to you people okay so we'll be sharing our email ids and all so then i can uh, contact that okay yeah that's about the, how the training goes on okay so i'll give the overview of this uh, particular program so what will be thought and what what will not be thought okay so <coughs> So let me share my screen. Is the screen visible, guys? Everyone able to see? It's a yeah. You will be learning in week one class okay so you will be given an introduction to the tools for python today i'll give that introduction now okay so i'll give the introduction about uh, keywords identifiers okay then uh, uh, basic uh, io statements then you will learn about uh, different types of data types in python see actually python is very easy to learn okay so that you will actually um, understand now itself in today's day one session itself okay how easier it is compared to the other programming languages okay you will learn about data types you will learn about uh, other concepts on uh, in data types you learn about int type float type so you will also focus on the most popular python data types list strings tuples dictionaries we will not cover set the reason is we don't need exclusively the sets in our uh, basic learning of machine learning so we are avoiding that concepts okay even because we are not going in depth of a python programming because our focus is on to learn machine learning as well as learn the basics of python okay we are learning the as much as programming which is required for machine learning okay as and when there are some few topics are required we will be covering it during the regular machine learning concepts okay you will learn about flow constructs please take a note of these things okay if you're having notepad <coughs> flow constructs like uh, if condition if else for loop while loop uh, you'll learn about break statement catch you will also learn about few concepts on uh, uh, like uh, this is not break and continue then you have try and catch for exception handling so these things you will learn about so you will learn about file operations not in week one you will be learning it later on okay you will learn about uh, matplotlib basics okay so these are the concepts you will be learning in week one okay so welcome amruta balu You are welcome. Can you see the screen? Yeah. So you are from? Which college? BIT? BIT. Okay. 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 Continue. So we are giving just a overview of what will be covered in the during this uh, course. Okay. And this internship program. Okay. We will be covering Matplot basics for uh, data visualization. Okay, next we will start with the week 2 where we will continue with the visualization will be continued so apart from matplotlib we will also learn one more library called as seaborn for statistical visualization so then you will learn about numpy for arrays then you learn about pandas then you learn about data exploration okay which is the heart of your machine learning which is a basic and a very important stage in machine learning okay 
whenever you want to implement a machine learning based projects first of all you need to understand the data okay here you will learn about uh, understanding the data data by visualization and also by looking at values okay so but visualization gives the more detailed view of the uh, data and we can find some inference okay any inference in the data or uh, so some kind of inferences or any relationship among the data what it is there so we'll try to find out that relationship okay so this is what we'll be understanding and we'll be doing a mini project on data exploration okay it's in the week two along with that you'll learn about data cleaning no sorry we cannot do that because we have a one day holiday in the week two okay because of that okay so we'll continue with the week three with the data cleaning and introduction to ml okay so all this you will be exclusively using the python for all this learning okay again in data cleaning again you will use the some other libraries in the python again okay so data cleaning like um, few concepts on uh, missing data handling okay binning uh, so you'll uh, do it one hot encoding so there is some of the concepts to handle the a so corrupt data like some there are data sets which we take it when there are maybe chances like missing data is present okay so categorical data will be there like numerical names cannot be fed to the machine learning models oh, sorry categorical data that means string data you cannot feed it directly okay in many of the machine learning models so then we need to clean them so for that we will understand the data cleaning okay so then we will introduce you to the introduction to the machine learning so both supervised and and so we'll be learning about the unsupervised learning okay in this we'll start with the regression so simple linear regression multiple linear regression and followed with the mini project on house price prediction so then stock market like this two projects will be doing it like if you are interested with uh, if you have any uh, good project in mind okay we can uh, take it up which is ca can which can be completed in a one or two days so that can pro that kind of project you can take it up okay so that you need to clearly if you're informing so we can take it that kind of project also okay apart from these projects okay or similar projects will be taken up so employee salary prediction investment uh, investment prediction so employee salary prediction and investment predictions are very simple but these two are a good mini projects you will be doing it in week 3 okay and they will also give uh, will give you the next week session that is week 4 you will learn about classification you will learn about unsupervised learning In classification, we'll learn about uh, k nearest neighbor classification. Okay, you'll learn about support vector machines. You'll learn about decision trees. Okay, and also you will learn about naive Bayes. Okay, classification. Okay. So with a mini project on classification like flower classifications okay we can do it we can do a project on uh, disease classification so like the several like we can take our talk about water quality classification so like this several models we can take it and build it a data set we can take it and we'll be building the project okay so unsupervised learning you will be learning about k means clustering and a project on this okay like color based uh, image separation 
something like that mini project will be doing it okay so then we will introduce you to the deep learning concepts basics so that is neural network and ANN theory with a lab session for all other concepts you will be having lab sessions followed with a mini project but here in this you will be having only the lab session because it's introductory part okay so these are the concepts you'll be learning in these four weeks okay if you are interested later on you can extend your learning for an additional six weeks okay by paying additional two thousand rupees okay that will be online classes only i'll give that details little later on okay so maybe in the upcoming classes okay so so these are the things you'll be learning guys in this weeks okay and uh, hopefully um, now actually i'm not presenting you a direct presentation and making you people to bore okay so you people has to take this notes as i start typing and all okay so whatever things i'm presenting it you people has to make a notes of it anyways we'll be giving you the notes for reading purpose so that will be given after two weeks okay so you will be having you will get a soft copy so if you are nearby and if you are able to collect it or if you are able to collect it after your semesters uh, once you come to the colleges you can also collect the hard copy okay so <clears throat> if you are interested to get it couriered so we will be couriering it also okay so you need to bear that couriering charges yeah so these are the things you will be learning it okay so if you guys have any queries regarding this you can raise it Tanmay. Yes, sir. Any have any queries regarding this learning? No. Okay. Varshini. Yes, sir. You have any queries regarding this uh, learning path? Content is concerned. Any questions are there? Okay. Shruti? No, sir. Arushiba? Uh, Bhumika? Both VK, KM. Any, any questions sir, are there? Uh, you, sir, you are taking daily classes or uh, once in a week, sir? The classes will be daily. No, sir. Da the classes will be taken on a daily basis. Okay, Monday to Friday, the class timing is between Monday to Friday so are you people comfortable with the timing the 6 to 8 or we can make yes, it sir. we can make it 5 to 7 also if you all comfortable if you all comfortable we can make the timing between 5 to 7 okay. mini project of our own yeah you can choose that that's what I mentioned here right um like i given it is if you guys have anything in mind you can discuss it okay but in a week for you'll be doing a mini project so that will be of your okay own chosen project so we'll be making a group okay so no matter which college you people are from you need to discuss among the your peers okay because peer learning will help you a lot okay so you can discuss among your group mates and do this mini project this is the final project okay so this is not it this will be above your mini project what will be doing it here in the classes okay so here i'll be de deciding these uh, these things okay so if you have guys have anything here well learning in mind we can do it as a your mini project at the final project which will be doing it okay so we cannot consider it as a mini project so it, it, sometimes it can it just we give the name as a mini project it will be like a major project also some cases yeah Shiv Prasad, that's clear yes sir yeah then any others have any queries so shall we move on to the next like we'll start with our classes now okay more well, like uh, yes give me a minute guys okay so just be online for two minutes
मानतो Yes, guys. Yeah. Now, so we'll start with the introduction to the Python programming. Okay. Mm, someone joined recently, right? Who is that? Ravindra, right? Someone joined. I think he left. Seems. Okay. Guys. So here. Uh, we'll be using the tool called as Jupyter Notebook or Google Collab or Google Collab for doing Python pro uh, programming okay in order to compute our Python programs we'll be using Jupyter Notebook or Google Collab later on we'll be using spider okay this is another uh, ide for uh, python programming okay so jupyter notebook is a good environment where you can write your python codes as well as you can write uh, um, you can you can also write your documentation also okay so in order to install jupyter notebook or spider you'll be using a software called as anaconda you'll be using a software called as anaconda navigator okay so this software will help you in uh, uh, getting these softwares installed go to this particular website called as anaconda.com what is anaconda okay so anaconda is a software package so which gives you uh, a software package for data science and ml okay provides most of the software packages and libraries okay required for data science and machine learning okay it gives you the okay so programming languages like uh, python and uh, r these are the most popular languages used in uh, this machine learning and data science okay so it gives you the tools for programming python and r okay along with the libraries required okay and also it gives you other packages for uh, building user interfaces at all okay so that means once you install anaconda navigator you'll get multiple softwares okay just i'll show you what are the softwares you'll be getting it so mine is little bit older version in latest version you'll be getting still more see it is giving me jupyter lab jupyter notebook pycharm spider it is also giving us vs code r studio these are the softwares we will get it once you install anaconda navigator anaconda okay this is a navigator where you can choose which software you want to use it like you can launch jupyter notebook it will launch the jupyter notebook so this option you will get it once you install the anaconda okay so in order to install it's a freeware for individual users i can just uh, click here on uh, uh, resources for downloading it okay individual edition which is completely free click on individual edition okay you can click on download okay straight away download for windows approximately 477 mb okay free you need not to do any registration okay so click so your installation will begin your installation will begin here let me do installation in some folders i already have a version okay this is my uh, latest version which will be installing it okay so then you please complete the installation i'll share you people like how to do this installation okay because already i have it in my system i'll not show how to do the installation okay i'll be sharing you the video of how to do the installation it's a normal regular software installation but if you people are uh, like to know the steps please go through the video we have already posted in our youtube channel okay so that will help you all people with a installation guide okay 
there are few options you need to enable it during the installation so just go through our video and you will be able to do that on your own okay yeah so that is the one thing you'll do it with the installation okay so once the installation is completed once the installation is completed okay your next step will be to start the jupyter notebook okay so how you're going to start it okay let me show you how you're going to start it and all so i'll be just closing it now to start click on anaconda navigator here this is the symbol or you can search in your windows okay and then you can launch your jupyter anaconda okay or otherwise you can directly search for jupyter notebook and you can launch it okay so but i recommend you to start with the uh, anaconda navigator okay, so that you can uh, at least beginning you can visually see what are the, the softwares available but once you install the anaconda navigator it is not mandatory like you have to start the session from anaconda navigator only okay you can directly launch the jupyter notebook also or spider if you're using spider say like i'll write spider in search window uh, so i can launch the spider tool from here itself okay okay before that i'll tell you what is this python this python akshay akshay yes sir python enri what is what is python uh our own language it is a program language so where i so it's a type of snake right yes uh, sir it's a one type of snake yeah so but somebody has chosen that name for a programming language okay so with a certain syntax okay so what he gave the name as he gave the name as python okay so who did this who invented this particular programming language called as python guido guido van rosso okay so is the uh, like uh, person who invented the python programming language okay so what is python don't tell like this python is a type it's a programming language python is a high level interpreted interpreted programming language okay supports um cross platform operation okay so python is a high level interpreted programming language supporting uh, cross platform operation like uh, so it's a one kind of a programming language but it is a based upon interpreted okay it is based upon a interpreter it is based on interpreter what is interpreter okay so there are two types of programming language one is compiler based and one more is your interpreter based so in compiler based what happens is okay so we need to we need to stick to the syntaxes okay uh, then clear check for the syntaxes okay and then compile the code you need to compile it compile it means so generating generating machine code okay so that's what happens in c programming right when you write a c program okay in a turbo c or you'll be using code blocks and all so you need to generate a executable file like hex file or you can call it as a machine code so when it will be done it will be done in a compilation stage so which will be done by a special software unit called as compiler okay which will check for all syntax and semantic rules okay and then it will include the libraries required and all then it will generate a, an executable file so then you will be able to after these stages 
stages completion we can generate it we can uh, run the program right but in interpreted programming languages what happens is we can check we can run line by line code okay so this uh, interpretation will happen line by line okay you need not to compile the program there is no uh, rules of compilation here okay so there is a program okay you have written a 10 lines of code okay if there is an eighth line okay which is having a syntactical error okay there is a error in syntax of the eighth line still you will be able to run the code up to the seventh line and you can stop at eighth line the code will stop at eighth line but in the compiler if you return a code okay 100 lines of code you return okay if you are missing a semicolon still you will not be able to run that particular code because there is a syntactical error the compiler is not generating a executable file because of that so you need to call uh, you need to rectify all the errors then generate executable file and run it okay so this is the major difference between your interpreter and the compiler okay so usually interpreted languages are most uh, uh, easier and they are used in gpos so they are used in general purpose applications okay so they are used in general purpose application development okay so where this compiler based programming language are used okay so most widely used in used in um, embedded applications because uh, the code generated by um, compiler based languages are more efficient and is much more faster than the interpreter based uh, codes C is a C is a compiler based programming language. That's what I said. Okay. So when you write a C program, you need to compile it, right? So then only you will be able to run that program. So whereas your Python is a interpreted based programming language. Okay. So if you look at C, most widely used where in embedded application like uh, controller programming. Okay. In microprocessors. Okay. So these areas will be using C or C plus plus because they are very faster they generate a machine code base the code size will decrease but in inter interpreter based languages okay the code length the code size will be more compared to the c and c++ so, so they are not used in the embedded systems rather they used in the application like uh, softwares which will be developed okay, applications like um, we will be using in mobiles or in computer programs okay computer applications so that's the major difference between them. So example to few examples of a uh, interpreter languages are your Java, Python, you have MATLAB. So we cannot take Java as a fully uh, interpreter la uh, language. It can fall in both uh, uh, interpreter as well as compiler because so once it usually interpreter based language in the beginning but internally it has something called a java virtual machine which in turn generate a uh, which in turn uses a compiler okay so it falls under both the category okay but the compiler languages are c c plus plus even you can take a java as an example for that because java can fall into the both the places okay Any questions guys in this?
okay any questions anyone are there questions again amrut balu amrut balu no doubts bhumika came no doubt sir okay shruti no doubt sir okay varshini tanmay no, tanmay no doubt sir fine guys so shall we move on to the next topic yeah we were, we were actually here so i was actually discussing about uh, anaconda navigator and the uh, uh, jupiter notebook okay so then we started with the python right so python has uh, two versions one is version 2.7 and one more is version 3 and greater okay so current version which is 3.8 even 3.9 is there they are not releasing 3.10 yet because of there is some lack of support uh, with windows machines okay so 3.8 is also okay an anaconda navigator which when you install you will be using a 3.8 version okay but i'll be using or uh, depends on the trainer okay so you may they may be using version 3.6 7 or 8 okay but you don't find any major differences in any version of this okay the coding syntaxes remain same but with the version 2.7 to 3.8 there is a so some differences are there okay but we are not going to use the version 2 and it is no more used in a, m- most of the places okay around the world okay so you need not to worry about the version 2 at all use the version 3.8 or any version of the 3, 3.56 all are stable versions only yeah so that's uh, some quick introduction what we have it on python okay so let us start with um, python programming language why we have to learn python okay why we have to use python why we have to learn python okay the first reason is okay what is the first reason why python python is very very human friendly language with the minimalistic syntax the minimalistic syntax okay very easy to understand and learn so that's the major uh, reason why we are using it okay so it's a versatile program that uses it okay <clears throat> so this is the main reason okay shubh prasad so very easy to understand yeah versatile programming language yeah. so due to its ease okay what is happening is it became increasingly popular among the uh, uh it sector okay and due to the the popularity of the machine learning okay so since it is a open source programming language open source it is a open source programming language there's another uh, reason okay so because of this reason so no need to take a license to release okay so you don't require a license okay to release products okay so based upon the python programming language also, okay and because it's a open source you will get plenty of plenty of community support okay when you are trying to develop an application okay so you will get a plenty of community support because of it since it is open source and since it is easier many people are using it so whenever you find a doubts you can always get a help in online itself okay so that's the best part of it okay sometimes you stuck with the c code so you try to search in google so you don't find many a case the solutions the reason is c is not that much popular nowadays 
uh, if there are older threads are there then you can find the answers but with the python you will get many uh, suggestions for the same queries okay so that's the one best part of your uh, learning the python programming language okay and next thing is nowadays most of the industries most of the industries using it so used in several areas like uh, because ml and dp something called as ai so are popular increasingly popular and uses ml uses python as a base as python programming in many applications okay so uh, when you try to apply for a ml based job if you show that showcase that you have python programming concepts okay so definitely you have better hold on to the uh, better uh, like uh, weightage in your interviews okay so that's the uh, like because of this popularity and increasingly higher usage in the machine learning deep learning ai areas okay so also used in cloud computing okay so databases also it supports so databases also you can handle databases like this plenty of areas applications are there even i can use it in web designing okay so that you can combine your css html and all okay since it's a class cross platform and also support integration with other languages that means you can integrate java code with python and all some integrations are supported okay support integration with other languages yeah like this i can list out many a things okay so why you have to learn one has to learn the python okay it's not just because of similar uh, like syntactical uh, easierness okay so or e easy to understand something like because uh, it is much more than that okay so then there are plenty of libraries for various application domains you are interested in speech processing you will get a library for that speech processing image processing you get a open cv uh, library for image processing you are interested in uh, mathematical calculation you will get a scipy library okay you are interested in machine learning you will get a scikit library okay so like this plenty of areas are available you are interested in user development or uh, web applications you can get a flask okay like this many libraries are available which are very much helpful in uh, taking your python coding to the next level okay for your application development okay with all these reasons learning python is important now okay hopefully that gives you the fair idea so why one has to learn that python so if you guys have any queries regarding this please let me know Varshini? Yes, sir. Yeah, Varshini. Can you give out some reasons why you have to learn Python? I'm interested, sir. That's no, no, no. You can tell the main reasons. Now, what is Python is very. Um, no, you can read it or else. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can read it. You can see the screen, right? Okay, sir. Yeah. It's your way. Human friendly and minimalistic. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Very easy to understand and learn also. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Okay. So uh, it's okay. So, but in your in our classes, okay. So people, you people has to speak out, okay. So no, uh, don't worry. So we'll make you people to this habit gradually, okay. All of a sudden, we'll not ask you all people to talk a lot, okay. So we'll make sure that at the end of the uh, your 
internship program you people are comfortable with speaking and presenting okay the topics whatever we teach it okay fine thank you varshini tanmay yes sir can you list out other topics other importance of uh, python sir it's diversity in field because it is used in many industries and even it can be used in various applications such as uh, cloud computing web design database and even we have more opportunities in it yeah and even it is user friendly right thank you very good done sir one doubt sir yeah heady sir java matte python eldu means convert idu convert madak varutha sir the python program na java ge java kinda python oh and see that i am not sure that like you can convert something like that okay so but you can integrate it you can have two languages in one code like you have developed some application in python sir, java i recently heard about it I, re- I recently heard about it. Like, like, like your company, sir. He yeah. used to work as Java programmer, sir. But, uh, like, I'll tell you something like that. Uh, what will happen is, so these are like exclusive software package, software tools which you have to use it for that. Say, I'll tell you something like, like in MATLAB programming, what happens is, so once you written a MATLAB code, okay, it's a, it's a separate syntax. It's very much similar to Python. Okay, from that code you can generate C, C plus plus code. Both the codes you can generate it. okay but if you have a c code you can generate a matlab code from that also okay so for that i need to use that expensive software okay so but here also okay so when you return a java code okay so you can do the conversions but they are not straight forward okay they are not like open source completely yes got the point sure is shri prasad got it yeah uh if you check anywhere like online okay so these uh, conversion tools and all will be expensive only okay yes uh, any other questions rushab rushaba sorry Bumika Yes sir except java only Yes super sir you have query Yes sir uh, python can be converted to any other sir uh, yeah, yeah, other than like you told me that uh, matlab can be converted to c c++ yeah. like right python can be uh, like python language to be converted to other languages okay Yes. see it is like not like uh, it is python is a open source coding language the, it is been developed okay by guru vandrusu later on it has been u- used uh, like updation is happening by m- much of the community support okay but it is not as it it is not a tool separate tool okay for conversions uh, language is not required it is required required is the tools are required okay but you will find plenty of tools which can support the different different language conversions okay you can find it online okay so there are supports are there for say example so exclusively the some industry requires them to write a python code and then convert it to the java they definitely develop a software for that there are tools are there for that conversions okay like that you can find applications uh, supporting many language conversions not just a uh, python to java or python to c the many conversion tools will be there yes shubhra sir yes okay guys uh, so that is your basic introduction to your python programming okay so then now we'll move on to the uh, using how to use this particular language okay how do we start our uh, beginning journey uh, about using the python okay so as i mentioned we'll be using jupyter notebook now the rakshita uh, madam will be continuing with this session okay uh, rakshita 
Yes, sir. Now, uh, can you start with how to use the Jupyter Notebook from the beginning, from Anaconda Navigator? Yes, sir. I'll yeah. Thank you. Yes. I'll just uh, stop share presenting. Give me a moment. I'll share my screen. So once you launch your uh, Anaconda Navigator. And then you'll select your Jupyter Notebook, which we'll be using for coding and uh, to learn Python. Once you launch it, in few few of your laptops, you might directly be able to open the folder. Whereas for you, uh, for few people, you'll get a link here. A notepad will open, and you can see there is a link. You'll have to go to this link. Copy paste in your Google search. This particular window will open. Here you can select folders, whichever folder you want your program to, uh, wherever you want to work. So I'll be selecting desktop. Once you select desktop, you can create a new folder here by using this option. You can see there are different options here. You will click on Python 3 notebook option. This is your IDE tool where you will be practicing Python. and. These are the cells where you'll be. Uh, these are called cells, and this is where you'll be writing your uh, program and executing your instructions. So let's go back here. We can use uh, Jupyter Notebook for documentation as well as uh, executing your program. So we have discussed what is Jupyter Notebook, how to install it, and what how to create a new uh, or your first notebook we have seen in this so as i said earlier each of this text dialog box which you are seeing it will be called as a cell and that is where you can either write the documentation or you can write the instructions so for example You can see this is the documentation and when I run this we will get the text as it, uh, like, it, is, it looks similar to your textbooks or any notes PDF format in video or I can use it for executing instructions. So I am printing hello world here if I run this you can see the output will also be available in the same window. This is one more example. So you can see when I executed this instruction, it is not like you could not see the output uh, as soon because I'm giving a delay of three. And one second. If you observe here inside the inside the square brackets you can see after three seconds the instruction is getting executed before that it was showing asterisk symbol so that is how you will know your instruction is running okay. oh, one more thing is where you'll be rename or giving a name to your Jupyter Notebook. Yeah, uh, one minute, Shita. 
thank you uh, just i'll showcase uh, one more uh, like way of launching the jupyter notebook okay okay yeah uh, as uh, rakshita showed you people like how do you launch the jupyter notebook that is one way of launching it so another way of launching will be like this okay uh, yeah just take me a moment i'll just share my screen so because this is the thing which you people has to get familiarity with uh, when you open your jupyter uh, like anaconda navigator when you launch it these are the options you will be able to see so directly you can click on launch as already your another trainer has shown you okay so but some of you people as she mentioned uh, you will get a direct straight away the excel like uh, the tab of jupyter will open automatically here like this but some of you will get a notebook as you can see it in the rakshita madam uh, like video okay so that's how the difference is okay so now you can select a desktop or somewhere like i prefer going to the desktop because here jupyter notebook doesn't give you the more options to select uh, folders okay better you create a folder in desktop and then launch then select that from this uh, jupyter notebook launcher for example i have a facet csc there is a classes okay i'll create a new notebook okay as madam mentioned so if you want to rename this title so this is untitled i'll give it as a day one the title name is okay so then we'll start writing the code here okay so let me print few names here okay print is a basic command like hello world okay so it is a hello world program which i'm writing it okay so as mentioned what is this varshini this is called as these are called as cells right yeah so what cell it is so it is a code cell can you see this can i check here it is called as code cell that means you can write your actual program okay but here i am writing print uh, hello world okay so this is if i change it to markdown cell so this will become a plain text so whatever you written there completely all the things should be executed okay but here only the print statement what is the uh, function print statement is accepting this uh, uh, string and it is executing that but what about here this is called as markdown like text you can write it if you write want to write your text as uh, rakshita madam shown you plenty of documentation you can do it okay so that's how we can easily do it the documentation so that's why we prefer using the jupiter there are plenty of other options are there okay so what are the other options you have is spider you have pycharm you got atom like you can use visual studio okay like this plenty of software options are there in order to write uh, python code there is a basic library called as uh, idle which is given by your python uh, org okay python website official website okay so so this is the python.org the official website so here it gives you the uh, like uh, basic software called as this is the latest version you can see it python 3.9.7 that is the latest version available okay so this is main uh, uh, website so you can download a software from here also but it is a basic software only you can learn python okay then rest of the things which i mentioned in your class at the beginning what you will be learning it so in order to learn that you need to install keep installing the softwares many libraries you need to install it okay so we are not preferring this uh, original versions by uh, python.org okay yeah. so that's your basic introduction uh, okay here now if i execute this one it will throw the error because it is not considering these values as a uh, text instead it is considering them as a variables so i'll change it a markdown cell okay so then i'll give give some beautifications like i'll extend the font size with the hash you can see here the font size the darks okay then i can give some names to this like uh, python softwares i can give a hyphen here with a space then hyphen space so this is like bullets 
you are making it okay so now you can check here how the documentation happened here madam has shown the example like how you can do it you can insert an image okay can you show that rakshita can you share your screen now yes sir so here you guys can see i have included certain images here even here as well so how do i do it is after selecting it as a markdown cell you can see here i'm using exclamatory giving the name of the image with its extension and the attachment so this is giving the file path so and it, this is how you'll be reading the images into your document so basically you can like use the jupyter notebook for both for writing your code right okay yeah rakshita right so you can use it for writing your codes as well as you can do the documentation okay so that means for a initial learners it is better right rakshita so which one is better like you prefer jupyter notebook or something else i uh, it is jupyter notebook is much better because you can also do the documentation for your practice as well as once you create an application if you are giving it to your client then if you if you need if the client needs to know some information you can put it in this itself in one folder itself so it is useful yeah so that means in one file okay so you can get both options like you can get jupyter no like you can get your code you have your code and you have your documentation as well so that's why it becomes uh, more uh, like you know intuitive uh, coding okay so any times you want to refer it okay you have a beautiful documentation okay so which will describe you what code you have written so what is the meaning of that code all sorts of information you have it okay so you can share it among your peers who want to learn python so they can also easily understand okay so that's why we prefer using the jupyter notebook rather than using some other languages some other uh, tools okay but of course the drawback of jupyter notebook it, it doesn't gives us the uh, basic uh, things which are required in the industry like uh, debugging your code is becomes uh, difficult in jupyter notebook then we'll switch on to the spider okay that's why we mentioned in the beginning weeks you'll be learning the coding in jupyter notebook once you people are comfortable in python coding then we'll move on to the spider okay that will be taken in the like third or fourth week session okay yeah yes guys uh, you guys have any question starting with tanmay Um, then Vashini. No sir. Yeah, Bhumika. No sir. Yeah. So any others have questions? Akshay. Okay. So moving on. Yeah. Uh, like the screen is not shared. I'll just share cast my screen. Wait, wait a minute, guys. Say uh, one point which I want to mention is Python uh, uses dynamic memory allocation. So that means you need not to worry about uh, need not to worry about memory, and you need not to worry about the data type. Okay. it does the data type conversion automatically based upon the data type used okay but this doesn't happens with your uh, you know what do you call uh, other languages like if you are using the uh, c program okay you need to mark a uh, you need to mention a data type of that okay then if you're using any variables you need to use you can tell you should tell that what kind of a variable it is okay then you can use that variable and then you can assign the value okay but here it is not like this say example i can take a variable called as a i can assign the year 2021 i'll take the variable b i'll write it as uh, abhyantrix okay 
so then soft lab so i'm assigning a string value okay c already with a single inverted quote or double inverted quote we can write it so we'll be having separate session on strings as well okay so just i'll be writing minus 5000 d is equal to 500.50121 okay yeah mm. then i can print these values i can print a comma b comma c comma d so no problem i didn't got any error i was able to print all the values okay so they have been assigned and they got the memory and they have been uh, printed also okay so what does this means then my so what is the meaning of this yeah following the command in a sequential order and it is printing and it is easy to like if, if C programming we have to mention it whether it is in float character yeah. so that means it can dynamically allot a memory and dynamically assign the data type okay so they are all different different data types actually okay so for example Shiv Prasad what is the data type of this variable a okay Varshini integer yeah Varshini integer yeah fine fine thank you Shiv Prasad so what is the data type of this b variable Varshini Ring. it is string Bumika. what is the data type of this variable actually it is a signed integer okay so this can be called as simply int okay in python it becomes simply int okay what about this one akshay this this is the float okay so can we check that okay so you have three different data types here but uh, without any headache we are able to assign the values to them directly okay so let's check uh, the type of a so that is the function okay to check the data type of a variable type very simple and easy to understand right b and uh, type of uh, c and print type of d okay so you can easily understand the like data type okay you can check int string int float okay straight away print as direct understanding okay so you are able to do this uh, beginning program today yeah so it is very easy to do it okay understand and memory allocation is also very easier it uses dynamic memory allocation so whereas c uses c program or a c plus plus uses static type of memory allocation okay in static memory allocation what happens is okay so you need to first declare a variable so then assign the value okay so that is what you have to do it okay then there is a chance like when you declare a variable with some memory okay so chances of garbage just can come and sit in your data right so you have some problem with the garbages okay so garbage values so but here you don't find anything like that okay. so that is the best part of your uh, python okay yes guys so that is a basic introduction to your python coding okay so if you have guys have any doubts please let me know Amrita, sorry, Amrut. Yes. Clear. Okay. Rushaba. Okay. So that's it. That's it for today's guys. Okay. So let me ask you few.